Hey there, my name is Kevin Carlson. I'm a mortgage broker here in Canada. Today, we're going to be talking about down payment and why it matters where it comes from. Ever since 2001, uh, there has been a new agency called FinTrack. FinTrack is a big, long acronym that stands for Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Center of Canada. Yes, I had to write it below, so <laughs> it's too long. Uh, so FinTrack was established to watch what happens uh, to money throughout Canada. Uh, when it comes to mortgages and what I do, it uh, comes down to down payment and where your down payment comes from. So yes, yeah, since 2001, they have been watching uh, where down payment comes from for the purchase of property. And the reason for that is for money laundering. Now, if you ever watched uh, shows that do with, uh, you know, crime and drugs like uh, Breaking Bad, you know that uh, typical crime entities operate on cash dollars. And that is a difficult commodity to move around the world for these criminal organizations to use. So what they do with those cash dollars is they launder the money. They uh, make it clean, make it so that it is uh, financially trackable and be able to put it into a bank account. Now, when it comes to applying for a mortgage, if you've ever applied for a mortgage uh, in the last uh, you know, 10 years or so, then you know that your bank statements get scrutinized. The last three or four months, your bank statements get looked at to see where your down payment is coming from. And what they're looking for is mysterious deposits and uh, basically the criminal proceeds of crime that you're using to uh, use as down payment to purchase a property because after you sell that property later on, that money becomes clean, it becomes laundered. So FinTrack has uh, actually been, over the years, been stepping things up and starting to make some changes. So as of October of this year, October the 11th, there's gonna be some big changes when it comes to the mortgage industry, when it comes to uh, anti-money laundering through FinTrack. They're coming out with some new legislation that is gonna make our industry uh, quite a bit more accountable and gonna be bringing about quite a few more uh, risks to our industry uh, if we don't do our jobs properly and do our due diligence to watch uh, these down payment funds and look at people's bank statements and investment statements. So there are quite a few different uh, new levels to this legislation. So let's go over some of the changes that are coming in in October of 2024. What's required is we have to come up with a compliance program. And uh, the chief part of that is to actually appoint a compliance officer that oversees that program. A policy and procedures manual will have to be generated to uh, guide the brokerage as to how they're handling documentation. A complete risk assessment has to be produced on the company to make sure that uh, how documents are transmitted is being done in compliance. And then there has to be an ongoing training program to make sure that uh, brokers are keeping in step with the policy and procedures manual and any new changes that might be coming down the line. The next step in the process is uh, making sure that we are reporting any suspicious transactions. We've always had to do this before, but now it's been spelt out in a lot more clear detail. So these reports are based on if we have reasonable grounds to suspect that there is a potential uh, fraudulent or criminal activity going on uh, within a client's application. Some of the uh, reports that would be required to work with are the uh, suspicious transaction report, terrorist property report, large cash transaction reports of over $10,000, and large virtual currency transaction reports. We also have to develop a Know Your Client form, which uh, spells out that we actually have a really good understanding of the client's uh, financial situation and mortgage that they're requesting. The mortgage application more or less does this as well, but this spells it out in a little bit more detail that we do have a full understanding of the client and the ins and outs of their financial status. Plus also we're gonna to have to keep records of all transactions for at least five years. Now fines that are gonna be coming about for uh, being non-compliant with these FinTrack uh, new regulations um, actually have a lot of teeth. And so just in the last few years, there have been significant fines doled out uh, to banks and even real estate companies uh, and some other companies as well uh, that actually show that this, uh, this is pretty serious. CIBC Bank uh, was uh, fined $1.3 million. RBC was fined $7.4 million. And the largest that I've seen so far is TD Bank that was recently fined $9.1 million by FinTrack. There have been some real estate agencies that have actually been fined as well. Uh, those penalties aren't in the millions, but the ones I've seen uh, start around $23,000, $24,000. And the highest I've seen uh, listed on the FinTrack website is about $280,000 uh, to a real estate company. 
So these are some pretty serious fines uh, that are going to be um, doled out for anybody not in compliance with these FinTrack regulations. So what you're going to be seeing is a lot more diligence in the mortgage industry. So if you've applied for a mortgage and thought the, the paperwork process was uh, diligent then, well, it's probably going to get a little bit more diligent. So they're going to be looking more closely at bank statements and investment statements uh, and making sure that the flow of money is uh, not suspicious. Now, that being said, um, most of my clients, when they're purchasing a home, they've got their investments uh, been sitting there for at least, you know, three, four, five, six months. Uh, and that's certainly what we're looking for. Those are not suspicious. Also, if you're intending on using your ongoing uh, paychecks and income going directly into your bank account, as long as it's being direct deposited, those are fine too. That's not suspicious uh, flow of money at all. If it's coming from your income, that's certainly fine. So just as long as you're in step with some of these new uh, rules and regulations, you will be required to submit at least three months for the bank statements and could even be more if you've been moving your money around quite a bit. My best recommendation to uh, make the mortgage approval process the smoothest for you is to not move money around a whole bunch, is to leave your money in the same account uh, right up until you're looking to get pre-approved and purchase a home. Because if you move money around to try and get a little extra interest rate on a different account or in a different savings account, um, then it just we have to follow that money as it goes. So always good to just kind of keep it in that account for at least the first six months right before you purchase a home. Now, if you're looking to purchase a home in Saskatchewan and you're looking for some assistance from a good mortgage broker, please reach out to me. I would be happy to give you some assistance. Thanks for your time.